Today on the show, we have Lauren Herskovic from Moda Group at Compass here in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about Lauren. She is the founding member of Moda Group at Compass, and she specializes in helping first-time home buyers in the Chicagoland area. Lauren's focus is on educating her clients with constant communication and utilizing tired and true systems, making the home buying process a seamless and, dare we say, fun experience for her clients. Lauren grew up in suburban Detroit, now lives in Logan. Logan Square here in Chicago. She has a, a she has a BA in English and secondary education from the University of Michigan. She also served as the editor in chief for an online women's magazine in New York City before working as a chief operating officer for a consulting company based in Chicago. She took that company from a three person operation to a team of over a hundred with offices in the U.S. and China. When she's not working, she's most likely at home binge watching Bravo with her dog Harvey. Please visit Lauren at her. Uh, team's website, which is modagrp.com, M-O-D-A-G-R-P.com. Lauren, welcome to welcome to the show. Thank you for being on it. I'm so excited to be on this podcast. I can't even tell you. No, please tell us. We love, no, I'm, I'm teasing. You do. You, uh, Lauren, Lauren revealed that she's been a listener for, for some time, which we greatly, greatly appreciate. And we we're excited to have a listener turned top producer here on the show. Um, but tell us a little bit about it. So you, you came from a very different world before you got into real estate. Yeah. So I have done pretty much everything to the chagrin of my parents who just were like hoping that I would figure something out at some point. Um, but when I bought my, I was living in Lincoln Park. I had been working from home for years for my company. We were fully remote and I needed more space. So I moved west to Logan Square about seven years ago. And then after I closed on my condo, I just kept going to open houses like a creeper because I was just kind of missing the experience of shopping for a home. So I sort of always knew I was, you know, I was running, I was helping to run this um, consulting company and I was sort of waiting for the company to sell because I was like, oh, when the company sells, I'll have money and then I can go into real estate since I knew so many people, you know, takes a little bit while to get, takes a little while to get going. Um, but the schedule of my previous job just burned me out before the business sold. So I sort of hit a wall and one day I just quit and reached out to the agent who had helped me find my home to get some advice and just took the plunge. It was just, it was time. And oh, I have not looked back. It has been way more fun in this job than in my last one. Yeah, I, I can imagine uh, there's certainly a lot more freedom, I'm guessing, and, and the ability to sort of grow grow your own thing, which which you have helped do. Um, so tell us a little bit about sort of when you got into real estate. You know, you didn't come necessarily from that background. You had a corporate uh, background. Um, how did you go about starting to build your business, considering this was a totally different industry for you? So <clears throat> I knew from my real estate agent that he wanted to build a team and sort of build his systems out. He was a top producing agent, but he had never really like formalized anything. And I also knew for myself that I didn't want to get into real estate and go from having a nice salary to having no money. Sure. So I decided for me, I don't like to do anything until I feel really, really confident about it, especially something as big as helping someone buy a home. So I approached him and said, Hey, I'll work for you for eight months. Let me build your entire backend system for you and build up your business. And in exchange, I'm going to mentor, I'm going to follow you. You're going to mentor me. And then I'll become an agent once I get the whole business set up. So I was really learning the business, not only from being able to be mentored and follow along, but to build someone's operation, you have to learn the business from the inside out. And so right. it allowed me to learn every step of the back end of the process you know, I got to learn all the vendors. I got to figure out how to communicate with people. I got to help run deals. So I was just learning it as I went. And so when I finally became a producing agent on my own on, uh, you know, the day that I started, they kicked me out of the nest. Um, I was, you know, a year ahead of other people. And I'd also used that time to start, you know, monthly communication with people, make sure everybody knew that I was in the business. And so when I did finally switch, I was able to hit the ground running and I'd already had like, you know, 10 months behind me of, of learning this business and, and of marketing to people. How important is that mentorship? And I know, understand you were also working and building systems for the team, um, but just being able to shadow a top producer, like how critical is that for you to then take that into the real world once you were, you know, uh, like you said, kicked out of the nest? 
I truly do not know how, pe- this is not a judgment. I just don't, I cannot wrap my head around how people can get a license and become an agent on their own without that mentorship. You know, it's, I just, I, to this day, I mean, I'm, I haven't been in the business that long and I'm far from a top producer at this point, but I have learned, I still go to James, my team leader every day with questions and, you know, into the team, we collaborate and we we're always bouncing ideas, but there's so much about this business. Every deal that you do, you're learning and, you know, and, and you don't know what you don't know, but if you're mentored by someone or you're following along and shadowing, you're learning from them, not just about, you know, like what is a good shingle versus a you you know a used up shingle look like or you know the difference between different things to look for in different kinds of buildings but also how to communicate things how to have the inspection conversation how to coach your clients how to work with other agents there's so many pieces and if you don't have a mentor you you're going to look inexperienced not only to your clients but the other agents and it's just i would it just makes me nervous to go out there and do that without having some mentorship and guidance ahead of time yeah, I, I agree. And, and it, you know, I think agents oftentimes, well, they're, they're, I don't even necessarily think agents are to blame for this because an agent gets their license and then they are approached by pretty much every firm in town who says, hey, we have great training, great support. Um, we're going to take good coaching. We're going to take care of you. And maybe they do. Um, but the mentorship piece of it is often missing, uh, even from firms that have excellent training. And that's the part that that I think is has been really pretty universal with most of the people that we've interviewed on the show over the years is, yeah, maybe they had decent training at their office. Maybe they had no training, but they almost everyone had a mentor. So for everyone listening out there, you know, Lauren's a perfect example of somebody that, you know, really got to learn from a top producer for almost a year before actually going into practice. And I I can't imagine what that experience uh, translates to with your clients, but it's got to be a huge, huge benefit. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, and I get it. It's like, you don't, everybody says like, I don't want to come in and be someone's assistant. And I get that. But, you know, I was somebody, you know, I was running a company before this. And I came in and I was like laying at the feet of every agent who would give me advice because you have to sort of swallow your pride a little bit and realize that you don't know everything. But I'm telling you like that experience was invaluable to me. And we have someone else on our team who has sort of stepped into that role right now. She's, she's an agent, she's licensed, she's doing her own deals, but she's working behind the scenes for us and helping us with our transactions. And she even said, she's only been doing it for a couple of months. And she's like, I have learned so much more by watching you and watching James and watching other people on the team that it's going to make her a better agent. So if there's an opportunity, you know, did I miss out on potential for income in that first year? Maybe, but I had solid income coming in every two weeks while I learned. And that allowed me to hit, like, exceed my year one goal when I was actually a producing agent. It's incredible. And, you know, I know that you, one of the biggest things for you is, is organization and discipline, habit, uh, systems, um, would love to talk about, you know, your thoughts around, you know, process, you know, as agents, of course, agents have to wear so many different hats. They're basically running unless they are on a team where there's defined roles. A lot of, you know, people are just individual practitioners. They are in charge of all the marketing, all of the operations, the customer support, you know, really everything. And then of course, every part of a transaction, um, which of course it can be difficult and systems help, you know, of course, create that structure to get things done and not let things fall through the cracks. But I know that's really important to you. So can you talk a little bit about what systems mean to you and, and how they've helped you in your business? Yeah, I just want to say that my grandma, <clears throat> who passed away years ago, she like, I didn't realize it until I got into this business. But when I was younger, we'd go visit her in Florida, and we would go to the flea market. And she'd always be like, we can't just go like, we have to have a system like, how are we going to navigate this flea market? And I feel like that should be <laughs> tattooed somewhere on my body, because that has been my approach to life. Like I have a system for everything, which maybe is annoying to the people around me. Um, but yeah, I mean, I learned the last job I had was, you know, running this this consulting company. It was grueling. You know, I'd be in the U. I'd be running our U.S. operations all day, and then I'd have to run our China operations at night. So it was kind of just like this endless thing. And sure. you <clears throat> you can't grow a business, and you can't really do that unless you build systems. So, you know, in the end of the day, where I am now is 100% because of what I learned from that grueling grueling time of my life where I had no personal life. I was like stuck in my house. It felt like 
this year in the pandemic, like i had been training for this moment for years for my previous career because I had been doing that. But um, I think the thing about real estate agents is that a lot of people who don't necessarily have this background in corporate or background in operations, you come in, you become an agent and you're really good at it. And then you get so good at it that you have to grow your business. You have to hire someone, you have to bring on help, but you've never actually memorialized any of the stuff that you do. It's all in your head and it works for you, but it's not going to work if you want to grow and scale. And so I think a lot of people end up, you know, there's an agent um, at Compass. She's like tippity top agent in the state. And we were talking once and she says, you know, she still runs all of her deals on a clipboard. And it like blew my mind because I was like, how do you do that much business with your, you know, a paper and a pen? It's just crazy to me, which more power to her. But um, I think the mistakes that people make is they build their business for today and they're not building their business for what it's going to be. And I think that just makes it harder to catch up later when you're so busy, you're overwhelmed with clients. And now you have to like write down your systems and train someone on how to do stuff that's only in your brain. Um, And I also think systems are just valuable because when you have a, most of us, our goals for the year are usually based on a number of transactions or a dollar amount. And that is very disheartening when that number feels so big and like grueling and it's hanging over your head for the whole year. And it's, without like steps that you're going to take to get there, it's just this target that's, it seems impossible to get to. So, you know, we, when we were building Moda Group, you know, James is the founder and I came on as, you know, doing the operations in the background, but we were really um, focused on not focusing on the goal, but focusing on the steps to get you to the goal. So you talk about this a lot, like winning the day. And that's really how we approach it. Because every day, I'm not going to have clients calling me and being like, help me buy a house every single day. And I don't want to go to bed feeling really bad about myself if that doesn't happen. But if you have steps and you have systems and you've got your whole buy side process down, your whole sell side process down, and you just know what you have to do every day, if you just keep doing those things and you figure out how to organize your life to make those things happen, it's going to make you better at your business. It's going to give you work-life balance, which obviously I did not have in my last career. Um, and it's just going to make this all so much more sustainable and scalable. Yeah, I think we're talking about being proactive versus reactive, because I know that as a real estate agent, of course, client, if you're working, if you have clients you're currently working with, you know, they're messaging you whenever they have a question, which could be at any time, day or night. There's emails coming in, there's coordinating with other agents for showings. There's a lot of just reactive stuff that comes into your inbox or into your phone, uh, you know, of course, and then all the non-real estate stuff that's coming at us at, at all moments of the day as well. So we're always having to be reactive and that can often feel busy and it can often feel productive. But if we don't have systems in place to like make sure, okay, winning the day is as you were referencing, like, well, okay, so maybe I spent most of my day servicing X client. Did I also do a few of the other more proactive things to keep my business going? And the answer sometimes is no, I just didn't have time to do that. But knowing what those activities are allows you to go to bed and going, well, I at least had a somewhat of a rounded day, or, or at least I knew what I was supposed to do today that didn't get done that I can pick up tomorrow. Yeah. I think it's also when I was interviewing agents before I'd gotten to real estate, like I would call everyone I knew who was in the business to find out, should I do this? There was this agent that I know who's out in California and like, he literally could not commit to a time to have a 15 minute call with me. He's just like, I don't know my schedule. I don't know. And I'm just like, I can't live that way. You right. know? And it's like, we all want to be there for our clients. You know, I was, you know, I'm texting with my clients at 10 o'clock sometimes at night. I get that. But I think the more rigid you are about structure and systems and processes, the more freedom you actually have. Because, you know, I, every day, um, we have some training at Compass and the person in charge of training is just every day. She just makes me smarter and better. And she just, I had this moment where she was like, put down a list of the things that you need to do to have a good day and put down a list of things that you, that sort of detract from like, take away from your ability to have a good day. And it just really helped me figure out like the things that I need to be doing every single day for myself and for my business. And then I, you know, I am pretty rigid about scheduling out my week. And of course we know things are going to change, but I know that there's things that I have to do every single week for myself and for growing my business and for servicing my clients. And so I'm just putting those, I'm time blocking, I'm putting them all in. 
um, my calendar. So they're there. So I, I know that, so it's not like I forget if they're not there, they're all there. And if I have to move them around, great. But that's, you know, like prospecting, um, you know, I'm always doing that. We're, we're spending time on that every single day, you know, time for myself for working out or, you know, personal time. Um, you know, I will on Sundays, I'll, pl I'll plug in my workouts. I will talk to all my clients on Monday to see when they want to go out and I'll schedule those blocks of time. So that way it's like, oh, I know I want to do an open house this weekend. So I'm going to make sure that I put that in because if you're servicing your clients and you're just waiting for them, then you're missing out on so many other things, whether again, it's for your business or for any semblance of a personal life that you would like to maintain, uh, especially during this time. Let's, um, yeah, that was all really great. I want to hear your specific thoughts on email ma inbox maintenance, because we've never really talked about this on the show and real realtors get more emails than anybody I know. Um, because of course, lots of realtors are sending out just listed, just sold, you know, whatever, um, lots of back and forth. How do you manage the huge influx of, of e emails to your inbox? Like what is your, what is your structure around that? DJ, I'm so glad you asked because I literally sat down with two people on my team yesterday to help them clean their inboxes because, you know, now that we're on Zoom calls and people are sharing their screens all the time, I get so much anxiety when I see people's inboxes have like 17,000 unread emails. Oh, me too. I it makes me sweat. I can't. I know. It's like hoarders buried alive. Um, <laughs> I am an inbox zero proponent Yeah. and I am very obsessive about my inbox because I think that if you have all this email, whether it's read or unread, if it's sitting in your inbox, you are going to lose things that come in and you're not going to be able to find them. So I use, um, Gmail has, well, I use Gmail and they have a tool where it's called multiple inboxes. So you can have like separate inboxes in your inbox. Yep. And so I have all my email that comes in to one. And then what I, and I have one, a separate email, a separate inbox right below that. It's called Lauren's to-do list. And all the emails that I actually need to read and respond to and deal with, I'll go and I'll move them into Lauren's to-do list. And then I just delete spam. You know, when I even like show requests, once they're confirmed, I delete all that because I just don't want it in there. And then, you know, my Lauren's to-do list might have 15 emails in it. It might have four, but like that's where I'm living out of mm -hmm. and, you know, getting and trying to empty that out over the course of the day, you know, or as soon as I can, but it's just, you know, because so much correspondence, like I prefer if clients email me versus text me, like, of course, we're going to text all the time, but you can't mark a text as unread. You can't star a text. You, you know, once you read it, it's gone. So for the inbox, I use it as a chance to, you know, as a place to do my work. But also like if I, for example, send something to an attorney and I'm waiting for the attorney to do something with the client, I'll star it. So I remember when I see it later, I'm like, oh, wait, let's check back in on that and make sure that he or she did that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think if you just have a full inbox, when your clients email you, it might get pushed to the bottom really quickly, and then you're never going to find it again. And I don't want to miss any correspondence. Like I want my clients, you know, because usually this stuff, a lot of it needs to be responded to quickly, because it's very timely once the deal is in motion. Yeah, this it sounds very similar to like the getting things done methodology that David Allen put together, which is basically when something comes in, whether it's an email or anything that comes across your desk, it, it gets filed immediately into the next action. So it's, you know, is it in a, in, in your case, your to sort of to-do list within that, your, your, your G Suite uh, uh, email account. And that way, you know, and I'm the same way. I, I can't actually get to inbox zero because there's a few things I keep. So I, my, my philosophy for, for me, I say, if I can keep less than 10 emails in my inbox, then I, I, I can see everything on one screen, which is very helpful as well. Um, so for everyone out there who does have thousands and thousands and thousands of emails, first of all, probably go Archive go through them. and yeah, just, or just delete the last 95% of them and then go through the last couple of weeks of stuff and, and get it out of there because, you know, nobody is, is that organized in their mind to be able to keep track of. And it, it sounds like a simple thing. We're talking about email, but this is where things get lost. I have another question for you. So now let's go to text messages. So when you, when you get a text, that's an action item, you can't really start it. You can't mark it on red. You can't easily drag it into your, into your Gmail inbox. And so what do you do with that so that you don't forget about that in your text thread? Ugh. So I have actually sat for a focus group begging like Google and Apple products to allow you to organize your text messages and mark things on red. I don't know why that hasn't happened yet. And it, yeah. 
if you, Apple, if you're listening to this podcast, can you please, like, you have $150 billion. Like, can you do something with it? Um, but for me, so first of all, the other thing with text is like, when you're real, when you're in this business, you're getting texts from a lot of people whose numbers aren't stored in your phone. Right. You know, and you've got clients, you've got, you know, everybody's texting you. And then, you know, over the, if you're doing a bunch of showings and people are texting you with requests for or feedback or anything, texts get pushed down. And then like, obviously like the ones I'm usually uh, focusing on first are the clients. And then my friends don't get, I, you know, three weeks later, my friend's like, yo, I asked you to go out to dinner, you know, before the pandemic and I still haven't heard from you. Um, so I have a reminder on my phone every day at three o'clock to check my texts and just go through oh, and just make that. sure because by three o'clock, usually that's like the bulk of the stuff has come through and it's just forces me to go in. So I don't have anything on red. And at least I know I've gotten to everything. Um, and then I also, if a text comes through and I'm reading it and then I realize I'm going to forget about it, I ask Siri to remind me later to go back and like with the action item or I put it into my, I use Todoist, which I love and I'll just throw it into Todoist. I am a huge Todoist person. So uh, there's a cool thing for this. We're, we're getting probably a little bit too into uh, uh, stuff talking about Todoist. But if you're looking for a great to-do list management tool, Todoist, I've been a client of theirs for years. It's like a hundred bucks a year. I don't even think it's a hundred bucks a year. It's I think it's like 40 because I used yeah, to use Wonderlist really and Wonderlist went away. So I had to switch to Todoist last year. Yeah, Microsoft bought Wonderlist and then I think it, it went it away. It ruined but, it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, so Todoist is cool, but whatever to-do system you use, and so there is a, there is an integration with Todoist and Siri, if you didn't know. So you can ask yeah. Siri, yes. So you can ask Siri to then, put, so anyway, you can just tell it to put it into Todoist. But for everyone else out there listening who either you have an Android or an Apple phone, all you have to do is, and if it's Android, just say, you know, to, say to Google, remind you at, you know, about this particular thing. So you just can speak it right into your phone. Obviously, you know, that that's somewhat obvious, but it's easy to forget that. So you see this text, you know, with an action item and you're like, ooh, and just immediately grab your phone, use the voice command and set up a reminder, whether it's through Todoist um, or just through the native, you know, reminding system through the app or through the phone itself. Yeah, but and that's, then those reminders stay on your phone until you make them go away. So it's like, yeah. even if, you know, you said to do it at seven, but now you're on a showing at seven, you just keep it there until you get home. Um, I live, you know, cause we're always in the car, you know, driving around or doing things. So I live, I talk to Siri probably more than any actual person in my life. I'm telling yeah. her all day long to remind me to do things. Yeah. You know, and, and it's, uh, it's funny because I've done so many of these episodes and we talk a lot about big picture strategy. We very rarely get this, um, sort of, so, well, we talk a lot about strategy. We don't always talk about tactics. So this is an actual, like, super helpful tactic. So I know, I know, we'll uh, we'll we'll move on from that. But but having systems in place is, is really the what we're talking about. So we talked about text uh, systems. We talked about, of course, email systems. What about? St here's one that I always am curious to know what what agents are doing. Staying in touch with either people that uh, are not yet a client or maybe a client that you know, already did a transaction and you don't anticipate maybe even having additional business for years and years. So let's first start with your, your, uh, your sphere of influence or, or the people in your contact list. What are you doing to stay in touch or what advice do you have for agents to stay in touch with those people so that when they are ready, that of course they think about you? So we subscribe on our team to the 33 Touch program uh, through Keller Williams. That was the first book I read when I got licensed was the K the million dollar millionaire, millionaire real estate called, agent. the red yeah. book. Yeah. yeah. The red um, book. I, so we use a CRM. Um, Compass has a CRM, but we built our CRM before we got to Compass and our CRM also is a transaction management tool and it's how we run all of our deals. So we're still using that. Um, but so it's like, part of the team being on our team is, you know, we're going to do 12 emails a month. We're going to do or a year. We're going to do 12 like mailers. We do, um, you know, it's just part of our business planning at the beginning of every year is sort of mapping out what that's going to look like. Uh, and I have to say like, I don't like to spam people, but we, so our focus is really on providing content that people actually want to read. And I think there's other, there's more layers and levels that we could go where it's like renters get one and buyers get another sure. and, and, but for now, this is what we can do. And I think if you're going to build a system, you got to build the one that you can actually use because if you build a system that you're not going to use, like what's the point? Um, so that's, we do that. And then I, I prospect every month to a different segment of my database. 
you know, texting them, reaching out, you know, we, t- you talk about this a lot, you know, I follow all of my clients and sphere on social media and just to interact with them and just to, you know, know what they're doing in their lives, um, just to stay in touch with people. Because my focus as a real estate agent, I'm, I really am not a salesy person. Like, I don't like to be like, oh, you know, please send me your referrals. Like, it just makes me uncomfortable and a little bit itchy. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, that's just me. I don't like to do that. So the way that I sort of focus on my lead generation and, and my contact list and just staying in touch with people is just being in their lives and then just like making sure they see, they just think of my face whenever they think about real estate. Sure. Um, I have a system where every time somebody refers me a client, like even if I haven't talked to that client yet, I send them something in the mail. Uh, you know, I send out birthday cards. I'm really big on handwritten notes because I think people just really love that. And, you know, there's so many amazing stores in the city of Chicago where you can get really cute cards and people just love them. So, but it's all in our CRM. You know, we've got birthdays, we've got home anniversaries, everything is built out so that if I don't remember that it's coming, I will be reminded. And that's the same reason why I like to use Todoist and these task management systems, because if I write a note down and a reminder on a piece of paper, that piece of paper is not going to text me to remind me to do it. And I want, I need systems reminding me you know, it's like even my niece and nephew's birthdays, if my calendar doesn't tell me, there's no way. So it's all just like, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I, no, no, I was gonna say the, the exact same thing. I do this with all of my <laughs> friends' birthdays, their kids' birthdays, and I'm not I'm not a, a real estate agent. I just do it because I wanna be a good, a better friend. But the same thing with, with birthdays, anniversaries, you know, it, it's one thing to collect all that data, but then you have to have it, it to remind you because, it, you know, for me, I know every morning I can look at my calendar and I can see everyone's birthdays and I can see the anniversaries and then I know, you know, if I need to send a text or, or whatever. Um, but it's really easy. I only have to set that up once and then right. I never have to think about it again. All I have to do is remember for 15 seconds every morning, I just have to look to see if anyone's birthday or anniversary is there. And, and yeah, for and our real- CRM reminds us a week before their birthday. So you can actually send something in the mail. Like if you send it, if it's the day of, everyone's getting a text on their birthday, but I want my right. clients to get like the card on their birthday, you know? Yeah. And my friend. But That's I think awesome. um, people who don't use a CRM, I just think you're holding yourself back because why do everything for yourself if you can have an automated system help you to do it. Like, I don't want to automate my emails. I don't want my emails to think, to feel disingenuous because they're not like, I I truly do want to reach out to people, but I need someone to remind me to do that. And I'm not going to pay an assistant, you know, to just remind me of things. I'm going to use a system that will do that for me. Um, And then there was one other thing, which I can't remember now about systems, but maybe it'll come to me. Yeah, I mean, I just think <laughs> you're just so right about about systems. I mean, I used to struggle to even remember. I mean, this is when when I first became an adult. Like, when am I supposed to pay my credit card bill? And this was before you could just set it up automatically. And I used to remember every month. Um, I was never. It was never that I didn't have the money to to pay the bill. I just sometimes I'd even forget. Then I'd have to call the credit card company and say, "Hey, um, I, I know I'm two days late. Can I pay this right now? Can you reverse the fee?" And it just my life was just more chaotic. And then thankfully now, of course, you know, we, we all, most of us probably just do automatic payments to all of our bills, but you can really do a lot of that for, you know, your business as well. So if you, you know, if you're somebody who, who needs to be reminded to comment on 10 people's social media posts just to keep your name in front of them, well, don't leave that up to just being mentally um, or or just allowing your brain to remind you naturally because you're going to forget, you know, and so you just want to set up systems. So get a, get a to do man, a to do list manager, get a CRM um, that reminds you, Hey, so-and-so's anniversary is coming up. So-and-so's birthday. And, you know, remember to check things like LinkedIn as well. I I talk about this a lot. Um, LinkedIn tells you when people celebrate work anniversaries, they tell you when people get a new job or a new position. Um, And I want to go back to handwritten notes just for a moment, because this is kind of funny. We, we, um, I'll, I'll give just, it's not even a secret, but I'll give one of the reasons why the firm I'm at, we've grown to from like, I think we had five brokers 10 years ago. Now we have 700 and it's not because I'm particularly effective at persuading people to join our firm. I am not. And I'm, and, and that's not really kind of the way we're not very salesy, just like Lauren, you were saying, but one of the ways in which we have attracted a lot of people is through personal notes, handwritten notes. Nobody else does that in the recruiting world. So if anyone out there is listening and is looking to recruit agents, write 
personal handwritten notes, whether it's to somebody who just passed their exam, if you want new recruits, or if you want somebody who's a top producer, write them a personal note and say, I am so impressed with blah, blah, blah. I just wanted to let you know, we'd love to have you or whatever you want to say. And I probably that's the one of two personal notes that person will get the entire year outside of their birthday uh, and maybe yeah. the holidays. Yeah. And I just, I think that, you know, I just, people want to feel, and this is just in life, like we want to feel special and we want to yeah. feel like someone knows, recognizes that we exist, you know, and cares about us. And it's just so nice to just, you know, to get my mail in and not be, you know, a, you know, some spam or whatever they call, what do they call real mail? That's not junk mail. Yeah. You know, it's just, but it, you know, and it's, it's just, I want my, I want to be really authentic with the, you know, it's like I become friends with the people that I work with. I think a lot of us do. And I just want to make sure that they know that like, it's especially when you're working with actual friends, like that, I don't see you as just like a transaction. Like I really do care about you. And, and, yeah. you know, maybe they'll send me a birthday card because I like them too. You just never, sure. you never know. But I, I feel like by creating systems, you know, like going back to your, you were talking about, you know, uh, reminding yourself to do things like I was never really that good at social media, but I kind of made a goal that I wanted to be a little bit more active on social media and just try to mix up my personal and my work and to, and just get out there more. I set a recurring task for myself in Todoist. They should really sponsor this by the way. <laughs> um, every three days, it was just like post on social media. And it sort of after a year became muscle memory and then it became part of my routine. But like I had to force myself and teach myself. So you know, and then um, a lot of people aren't naturally systems people. I feel very lucky that I am just because it does make my life easier, but it's not something you can't train yourself on. Like if you find a tool that will is great for reminders and just set stuff up for yourself, you can really train yourself to be really good at this um, and to just be more on top of things and to be, you know, more organized. Because I think once you realize how good your life can be when you're not always feeling like anxious the minute you wake up because you don't know what the day is going to bring. It's just, you're going to be a better real estate agent. You're going to grow your business faster. You know, it's really, I truly think that between the mentorship and the systems, it's why I've been able to be so successful in my first two years. And I have big goals to keep growing, but it's just been really, you know, almost shocking. I did not expect to do this well in the first two years. And I think it's because I'm just focused on the system and just the process every day. And can you, can you walk us through, and you, you've sort of pieced this together over, over the conversation, but I'd love to hear, and I know every day is different, but what does sort of an ideal day look for you, a deal, you know, work day, um, like during the middle of the week? Um, what, what would that normally look like for you? So I am an, I'm a morning person, um, but whether, whatever time you get up doesn't really matter, but I need, like, I like mornings because they're quiet and I can like do my stuff that I need to do. So that's, cleaning out my personal inbox, cleaning out my work inbox, and then getting all the low hanging fruit out of the way that I can do that I don't need other people to be involved with. So like responding to emails, maybe setting up showings, just all the stuff that once the day gets started, I won't be able to get to, you know, projects for the team, things like that. Um, I do, you know, we call it a power hour. Um, Mine's actually a half hour because our power hour consists of doing some of the things I do in the morning, but I do prospecting every single weekday. Um, and then, you know, I, you know, I will work out. I don't work out every day because I don't feel like blow drying my hair every day. So <laughs> work out every other. Um, but I make sure that that is scheduled in because that's the first thing to go when you get really busy. And I don't yes. want that to go from my life. Um, and then, you know, obviously every day is different, but a lot of the days, you know, when I've got like this afternoon, I have client stuff starting at four and going to like eight. So I'm trying to get all the other stuff done for my day. So that I'm ready for that, including, you know, making sure I have dinner for myself when I get home, you know, part of my planning and scheduling on Sundays is, is cooking food. So I have something to eat for the entire week, you know, cause that's important to me. Um, but there's definitely time for my, my own like work by myself. That's always first and foremost. Like I used to play tennis really early in the mornings and I realized that it made my day feel really chaotic because I didn't get that morning time. So I stopped, well, I stopped doing that because of the pandemic, but also because I couldn't play that early because it just ruined my schedule. And then I make sure that I block out time during the week for, you know, it's a little different now because of the pandemic, but you know, I make sure that during real times, you know, I had two nights a week where I was like trying to 
give my friends or my personal life or my boyfriend like time where we had dinner and I wasn't, you know, I was scheduling that in. So I didn't put showings over it and always forget for personal stuff to be fit in as well. Well, yeah, you just, you just said a lot. I only have, I have one last question and I'm just, just curious because you're so, you've, your systems are so well-defined. You talked about prospecting every morning and you don't have to share, you know, of course, exactly what that looks like, but what does that mean to you when you say prospecting? Cause I know probably a lot of people hearing this are like, Ooh, what is, what is, what is she actually doing? So I think at, at, uh, the ed- person who is in charge of education at Compass, she likes to call it, I think, reconnecting because prospecting sounds so like sterile but it basically you know it's like we take we processized it and we take a quarter of the alphabet every quarter every month um and we'll try to hit them three times throughout the year and of course people are going to fall in and out of this like you know there's people that i if i talk to someone three months ago and they tell me hey i'm I'm not ready to buy right now i'll set a reminder to check in a couple months later just to check in on them and see how they're doing but for me, prospecting is just like going through the list and just reconnecting with people in the way that they're the most comfortable. Maybe it's phone call, maybe it's text, maybe it's, you know, a Facebook message or whatever. Um, you know, sometimes back in, you know, when, when possible, it was about, hey, let's get lunch or let's go grab a coffee or, you know, just try to see each other. Um, sometimes it's just checking in, sending them, you know, something. I just want to connect with people because I don't want people to feel like I forgot about them once they've purchased a home or it's just making sure that the people who maybe came to an event or I met at an open house, you know, just trying to gauge where they're at and just stay on their radars, you know, and it makes me uncomfortable real a lot to call people who don't call back or to keep emailing people who haven't emailed back. But there was an agent once that I talked to and he said, until they tell you to F off, just keep calling people. So <laughs> that's just what I keep doing. And, until- and, and you're also calling people or emailing or texting people that are in your contact list. These are not Correct. necessarily your, you, you know, gave these me your not- number, buddy. Like I'm going to call yeah. you. <laughs> um, and, and these, these kind of calls aren't calling for sale by owners or expireds where you're going to, uh, you know, meet a lot of, uh, you know, unhappy people. Um, these are people that want to hear from you or, assuming they want to hear from you and again until they tell you to f off which <laughs> um which which again isn't that terrible of a thing either because then you can remove that person from the process um of course i'm sure that never happens to you but if it does happen it's oh. not a big deal because it's just part of the process it's, okay i'll remove that person from the process not a big deal well, yeah moving. and if you call someone twice in a year and they don't answer the phone or don't call you back then i put them on the do not prospect list because it's like stop wasting my time on people who you know, they'll still get my emails, but if they don't want to hear from me, I'm not going to keep calling them. If, you know, if eventually they want to call me back, great. But I don't, you know, that's part of the process as well as like when to remove people. So you're focusing your time on the people and the things that matter. Wow. Well, we are so, uh, so happy, Lauren, to have you on the show. And we're so grateful that you are a listener and that it's been helpful for you. And um, we are You've just built honored. my business, DJ. This is all oh, for you. Well, then I will, uh, I will be requesting a, a, a spiff on every uh, transaction. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's legal, but we, we'll figure out a way around it. But don't no, worry, uh, it's not like but, this is being recorded. <laughs> oh, yeah, shoot. For, strike that. Uh, there will be no spiff paid to me. I abide by the rules um, by whichever governing body does those roles. But anyway, um, <laughs> no, but thank you so much for being on our show. And for anyone out there who is, um, who's maybe a buyer, a seller, a renter, an investor who wants to work with a top team in the Chicago and area, the Moda group, um, or wants to work with Lauren specifically, who's an up and comer and she's, she's crushing it. Uh, what's the best way someone should read it, reach out to you? My zeroed inbox. It's, uh, Lauren at M O D A G R P.com. And also, you know, at Compass, I've, I've worked with a lot of agents who have asked me to help them. So if there's agents out there who need advice, you know, this is my passion is building systems um, and helping people just like be more efficient. So agents, feel free to reach out. Like I'm happy to, to help. Yeah. And everyone should visit Lauren uh, at, in the Moda group at Moda GRP. So group without the OU. So modagrp.com. You can learn all about uh, their, their team and, and what they offer. And also if you're an agent and you need some assistance, uh, reach out to Lauren. She's happy to share some of her systems with uh, the audience. So thank you, Lauren, so much for being on the show. We're so grateful to have you. Thank you. I have one last thing that I forgot. Please. We are looking, I don't know if anybody out there knows anyone, but we're looking for someone to help us with our social media um, on our team. So if anyone knows someone who's really good at it, we're, it's part-time right now. Um, but yeah, reach out because 
we need help. Our social media is not that good. I mean, it's better than it was, but we're still, we're working on it. Yeah. So anyone out there listening who either has a good social media person themselves or is a good social media person, and you could be from anywhere, uh, obviously, uh, reach out to Moda Group and say, hey, I want to help you guys take it to the next level because they're already a top producing team and they just need some help uh, with their with their social content. So anyway, Lauren, thank you so much. I want to, before we wrap up, I just want to tell everybody uh, who is listening, first of all, thank you for continuing to listen and watch and support our show. Please tell a friend, think of one other agent that you could benefit fit from hearing this great interview about systems with Lauren and send them a link to this episode. You can find us on our website, keepingitrealpod.com. You can stream all of our episodes right from the website if you're not a podcast person or just pull up a podcast app on your phone and search for Keeping It Real and subscribe. We'd appreciate it. Um, but tell a friend and also follow us on Facebook. Think of one, um, I'm sorry, uh, for Facebook, we post every single day. We find an article online written to help agents grow their business. And that's, we post that. We also post a funny like picture kind of meme thing. And the only other thing we post are interviews. So it's a great, we try to keep it lean and really helpful for agents. So fi find us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash keeping it real pod. Lauren, it is, uh, was such a pleasure. We're excited to continue to watch your growth in the industry and we will see everybody on the next episode. Thanks Lauren. Thank you.